Okay, and welcome once again to another edition of Tiger TV. I'm your host, Tony Simons, and have a look to my left here. We've got the one and only vice captain of the Galil Football Club, Jimmy Seller. Welcome, Jimmy. Thank you, Simo. And he's got his lovely daughter, Skylar, here. Hello, Skylar. Say hello to the camera. <laughs> Yeah, she's not working with us yet, but we'll work on she's that. She's a bit shy. She's yeah. just uh, warming to the task. <laughs> now, what a thrill this is. We had uh, James on earlier in the season on Tiger TV, and uh, this weekend he's playing his 100th game of league football for the Glenelg Football Club, following some illustrious footsteps, of course, Warren McGinty last weekend. Jimmy, what does it mean to play 100 games for Glenelg Footy Club? Yeah, it's a huge, uh, huge honour, Simo. I suppose it was one of the, uh, you know, cornerstones and reasons for me coming back after after being away was to, um, I think, last time we spoke was about, uh, you know, belonging somewhere and um, and really be able to stamp your flag and um, for me to be able to say that I'm a Glenelg person and um, to really sort of, I suppose, bring that uh, your career in a full circle and come back and play 100 games for the great club is, uh, yeah, fantastic. Something I'm very proud of. Yeah, so you should be. It's been a bit of a roller coaster season, James. Um, you know, started off brilliantly, had a bit of a lull. We've been a bit inconsistent recently. Now we've put ourselves under the pump, of course, and need to win this week against Westies. Uh, your thoughts on the season? Yeah, I suppose it has been a little bit like that, Simon. We sort of burst out of the blocks and um, yeah, had some really good wins um, up front. Um, and I suppose, you know, we, we would love to have it stitched up, but, you know, we've got the fifth spot, you know, um, all done and dusted heading into the last round. But it's still in our control. Um, and I suppose you can't ask for any more than that heading into the last round as our destiny is in our hands. We win this week. Uh, we play Adelaide Oval um, the following week for the first final. So, yeah, certainly an up and down season, but... Um, fully focused on this week and, um, and, and making sure that we uh, you know, go, get out there and, and take what we deserve and make sure it's ours. One question, I was thinking today about some stuff uh, regarding this season and uh, obviously late December the grandstand roof blew off and uh, we immediately lost uh, access to change rooms, all the facilities in there. Did that have an unsettling effect on the guys? Like obviously we had to get new rooms built and we got those done just in time but yeah. did that impact at all on pre-season? No, I don't think so. I mean, most of our pre-season was um, conducted out at, uh, out at um, Westminster um, and if anything our, um, our facilities have improved. I mean what we've got down there now is fantastic. The gym's in great nick. We've got everything we need to perform on a on a weekend, and um, yeah, certainly hasn't disrupted us at all. Let's get on to something a little bit more interesting than this football season right now, Jimmy. And uh, your beautiful daughter Skylar there, your lovely wife Sonia's here somewhere too, although she's not in shot at the moment. No, but I know she is here somewhere. A little bit camera shy. Uh, well, that's wife, okay. So. But um, what's it been like having a little addition to the family this year? She's four and a half months old. I think born in about March. Probably. Yeah, in a You'd March. know that birth date, wouldn't you? 29th. Very good. Yep. How's it been? Yeah, it's been fantastic. Um, I think early on was, uh, you know, a few hard yards and a few sleepless nights, but um, the little champion, she's been uh, she's been unreal the last, uh, last few months. She's, she's sleeping well and she's growing all the time, um, as you can see. She's been out to a few games and... Um, She's got her Bays jersey, and uh, yeah, she's our uh, number one fan. Well, so with that grip she's got well. on my shoulder at the moment, my arm, I reckon she might be a centre-half forward for the women's side in a few years' time, because yeah. that's quite, quite a strong grip. But does she sleep? Uh, sleep? Uh, is she feeding well? Are you changing nappies? All those important things to be husband of the year. Yeah, I'll... I, I do change nappies, um, probably not as many as my wife would like me to, but uh, I take, uh, I do all the feeds night after a game, um, and my wife is very good to me and lets me get a full night's sleep, a couple of nights out from a game, so I'm allowed to go and sleep on the couch so that I'm refreshed and ready to go for game day. Um, no, but she's been, uh, she's been really good. What about your father, the great laconic Ken Seller? How's he been with the little one? Is he sort of uh, pretty keen? Well, he's flat out um, Ken at the moment. My, my sister's got a couple of young ones as well. So he's a grandfather to three, um, Pop, as he's affectionately known. So, no, he's, uh, he's doing really well, um, as, is, as are all the grandparents, and uh, I think it's uh, keeping him young. Now, uh, probably not the place to ask it, really, but it doesn't normally stop us. Uh, she's four and a half months old. Wouldn't be too long you'd begin to consider a... Uh son or perhaps another daughter Sonia but a son because under the father son rule now I think that's correct we have another Glenelg footballer so you'd be working on that 
Well, it uh, might be in the pipelines, but we just got to uh, get ourselves settled and just make sure we're looking after one first, and then we'll uh, look to <laughs> add to the uh, add to the clean. We're always looking for scoops on Tiger <laughs> TV, and I thought I almost had one there for a, for a second. I can see Sonia just about fainted in the background <laughs> there, but that's all right. But um, James, get back to the footy for a minute. Uh, disappointing on the weekend. Uh, you know, obviously we were all here, and uh, 41 points to three or something yeah. uh, at quarter time. The game's going to be hard to win from there. Yeah. Uh, what did the coach say after the game? I mean, no doubt it was uh, super disappointing, especially the way we started. You know, I think we, we had a shot at goal in the first 15, 20 mm. seconds. You know, that missed, and then uh, we couldn't really stem the flow when they got a run on. And it tends to happen in um, sometimes in games. You know, the momentum sort of that you know strongly against you that it's hard to stem the flow, and you sort of can't get your hands on the ball, and you don't have any control over the game. Um, I felt that you know, there were going to be points in the game. I didn't feel like we were out of it at quarter time, such as has been our you know, scoring ability and be able to put um, you know, goals together quickly. But it was always going to be tough coming from seven goals down and you eventually end up sort of you know, late in the game chasing scoring opportunities, which sort of opens up your defence a little bit. And it was probably just a little bit too much for us to do late. But um, I suppose the message was a little bit. We had to wait and see what happened on Sunday with the Eagles Crows game. Um, yep, and thankfully, that went okay. Thankfully, yep. the Eagles um, did us a favour there, and they came back from about seven mm. goals down to steal that mm. one over the Crows. So, as I said earlier, it's about you know dusting ourselves off, not feeling sorry for ourselves. It's it's all all to play for on um, on Saturday and. Um, if we get the job done, then we still end up where we want to be, and that's playing final. I suppose final. it becomes like another uh, elimination final a week early, really. You win this week, you play finals. Absolutely. You lose this week, uh, anything could happen. One of the things I noticed, um, I mean, you've had a fantastic year, James. You've been rock solid back there uh, as the, probably the leader of the back line there with, with Brad Agnew. And um, not a criticism, but you both had five kicks and six handballs each on the weekend. And... Uh, You'd like to think perhaps we might take a few risks this week and try and run forward a bit on a bigger ground and try and get a bit of rebound. Yeah, absolutely. We're gonna Matty Lockham probably loves me telling you how to play the game. We're going to lose a little bit here. But, um, yeah, look, I mean, for me, yeah. I mean, give it here, I'll hold it. You want to hold it? Yeah, you have a crack? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Should be fine with me. Yeah, but okay, yeah, sit with Uncle Simon. Just come here. You sit there. There we go. Look at this. Fantastic. It's live. It's um, live. Just have a little look at that. <laughs> look at that. Here we go. You don't get this on every footy club's website. No. She's hey, loving it. Where's she's, Mum? She's loving that. Where's Mum? She's loving that at the moment. So don't dodge the question anyway, James. No, I won't. 11 um, possessions each you had last week. What I might quickly go and do is grab... I think... Uh, see, here we are. Zoom in. Zoom Let's in. Let's try. Let's try. Should we try a dummy? See if that works. Oh, beautiful. Should we try? Look at that. I'm not so certain I look comfortable here. I am. I've done it before. I've got a couple on my own. Let's try that. So, so I bring it around. Oh, yeah. She might, you know, might be out of shot. <laughs> it answers to yeah, the question. Go. My role, I suppose my and Ag's role predominantly used to be those sort of lockdown defenders um, and to you know to try and generate and probably more Howie and, um, and AJ and things like that down there to probably take those risks. Um, however, yeah, absolutely. I think we do need to move the ball a lot more efficiently from our back line, take more risks, change the direction of the ball a little bit. Um, we're probably a little bit two straight lines on the weekend, kicking long to a contest, um, which just sort of, as a team, it makes us defend a lot because we, we never really have control of the ball. We're always going long down the, the line to a contest. So absolutely on the bigger deck this week out at West Adelaide, it's going to be really important for us to, to do just that, take more risks by, by feet um, and, um, and make sure that we are sort of generating our ball movement from there. Absolutely. Do we expect uh, any changes this week or do you think the coach will show a bit of faith in the team we had last weekend? Um, a couple of changes? Oh, potentially. I mean, I'm, I'm not one that has to sit on on match committee, which is uh, which is beneficial. But, I mean, yeah, the, the core of our group has been together for most of the year. She looks uh, comfortable, doesn't she? <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, the core have been together for most of the year. And um, I'd say there won't be wholesale changes, but whether there's those, those one or two, I know a couple of the boys in the reserves have been really good. Um, yeah. So whether we make a couple of little changes there. But, um, I mean, for three quarters on the weekend, we showed some some real fight and showed what we can do, but obviously to start like that is really disappointing and means you. What do you coming. think we do start like that occasionally? Like some of our best yeah. football this year has been as good as anyone's. Mm. We've had some great last quarters. We've had some terrible last quarters, yeah. and this week we had a, a bad first quarter. I mean, the old saying, you know, we didn't turn up to play. I don't know what that means. Yeah. We all turn up to play. Absolutely. But was there something that was slightly different in our build-up? Do you think? Or do you think we're, you know? 
credit where credit is due, North yeah. Adelaide played well. Yeah, I mean, to be honest, I thought we were fantastic through the warm-up. Um, I thought that uh, the boys were sharp. We obviously knew, you know, just that we came to play. We knew what was on the line. We win, we play finals. Um, so we knew what was there. But for us, it's probably just stemming the, uh, learning to stem the momentum that when sides do get that bit of a run on, it's about limiting, it, limiting the damage to making it just two or three goals rather than seven. And I think earlier on in the year, whilst we did have some quarters that were against us, we probably did get to limit that damage that if it was, you know, instead of seven to nil, it was two to four or two to five, um, which really sort of helped. But um, you know, if I, if I had the sort of, if I had the magic, uh, you know, the magic sort of formula and could put our finger on it, you know, we, we'd stop it from happening. But I think it's about a lot about recognising momentum, um, recognising when we don't have it, and then just sort of, you know, slowing the game down, retaining the ball, um, and, and then capitalising when, when it's our turn and we have the momentum and the run on. Yeah. When you look at it overall, a lot of guys have had a go at the AFL, as you did. You played 40-odd games, as we talked about earlier in yeah. the season. A lot of blokes come back and don't necessarily perform or don't get back to that level. You've come back and all of a sudden chalked up 100 games. That's not an easy thing to do, particularly mentally. Um, how have you done that? You've obviously had to really commit and, and uphold the standards that you've been through in the AFL system. Has that been tough mentally? Um... To be honest, probably the last couple of years being back at Glenelg has been almost the, the best two years, the most enjoyable two years of my career. I think um, after getting the flick from the Crows and then getting the flick from the Ds, I, you know, I, I really didn't feel like I had a strong passion for the game and um, I obviously went across to play in the Waffle, but a lot of that was tied in with, um, with Sonia, my wife, her studies over there and things like that as well. So it was really a means to an end, me playing over there rather than actually my heart and soul sort of being in it. Um, but I suppose coming back in, um, back to Adelaide and back to Glenelg, uh, where it all sort of started, you know, I, I love this club and um, I played all my junior footy here. Um, I've, I've, I'm so motivated and so passionate to see these boys succeed. You know, they're such a fantastic young group um, and they do want to be good. And I know there's a bit of frustration sometimes in the inconsistencies and things like that, but there is a really strong will and want to, to, to improve. Um, and to bring this club back up the ladder and, um, and gets me out of bed every day. And me and Skylar, we come and do our weight sessions before work on a Wednesday and we're, we're, we're out here at 6.30 and, um, you know, that's what, that's what, that's what it's about. So, um, yeah, I mean, I couldn't be any, uh, you know, prouder, I suppose, to come back and play, play 100 games. But this week, it's, it's not about me. It's about us getting out and getting the job done and, um, and playing some finals footy, which we haven't done at this club for a long time. Well, you've been a star, mate. Your form the last couple of years has been outstanding, to be quite honest. You're the rock of Gibraltar back there. And uh, you've accomplished a lot since you've been back here. You got married, you've had a little Skylar, as I hold her up for the camera, <laughs> and now you're playing 100 games for Glenelg. Well done to Jimmy Seller. We need more guys like him around the club. Enjoy the weekend, mate, and let's have a win. Thanks, Simon. Appreciate that, mate. Right, Good mate. on you. Well, done. well, it's all three of us. <laughs> I'm just going to lose it. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, back to Dad. She was a star. Oh, really?